your radiator's job is to transfer the heat that's in your coolant to the air that's passing through. It does that by a series of tubes. As you can see, the tubes are going up and down on this radiator here, and there's a row of them. If you have one row of tubes, it's a one row radiator. If there's a second row behind it, it's a two row radiator, three rows, etc. These two radiators that you see here are three row radiators. Now you'll notice that between the rows there are thin pieces of metal. These are referred to as the fins. The fins sit between the rows and their job is A, to help dissipate heat, and B, to keep the rows nice and straight. Now as cars evolved and they became lower and wider in the front end, the tanks were taken off the top and the bottom of the radiator and they were transferred to the ends, so the sides. When that happened, the tube started running from left to right instead of up and down, and this is the birth of what we call a cross-flow radiator. Just like exhaust systems, radiators tend to have their problems by suffering corrosion from the inside out. For that reason, Quality Antifreeze has corrosion inhibitors built right into it. These work very, very well. However, after about two years, the corrosion inhibitors are pretty well wiped out. So every other year, what you want to do is completely drain your system, flush it out, dispose of the old coolant correctly, and then refill it with fresh coolant and you'll be all set. Another thing to watch for is that when these cars were new, they tended to have ducting or sealing going around the radiator. The purpose was that when the air came in through the grill, it would have to go through the radiator core. If you've got ducting that's missing or damaged, you can have air escaping around your radiator beneath it, and you're losing cooling efficiency. And lastly, if the tubes inside the radiator are obstructed or they leak, in years gone by, we would take it to a radiator shop. They would cut out the core, the middle of the radiator, and they would put a brand new one in. That service was called recoring. But now with the cost of labor going up and up and up, often it's more practical to just simply buy a new radiator that gives you the new core, which of course is what you're looking for. Also new tanks, new fittings, and new places where the bolts go through. Nothing is stripped or damaged. So there's three tips for taking care of your radiator. The coolant inside your car's cooling system has an ideal temperature of around 190 degrees. When everything is fully warmed up, all the parts have expanded to their proper size, the oil is thin enough to get into little places where it needs to go, and everybody's happy. Now, once in a while, if you drive the car hard or you climb a hill, the temperature will actually climb in the coolant to 212, maybe more. And as long as it comes back down again, when you go back to normal driving, everything is fine. If she goes up to the 212 or more mark and she stays up there, your system needs service. Now, sometimes we talk about 212 degrees and people begin to panic. They do that because they know that water boils at 212 degrees. But we can fix that. If we fill our cooling system with a 50-50 mix, half water and half antifreeze, we'll raise the temperature which it boils from 212 degrees to 223 degrees. Then, if we add pressure to the system, like you would with a pressurized radiator cap, for each pound of pressure that you add, you'll raise the temperature which the solution boils by three degrees. So this seven pound cap will raise the temperature by an additional 21 degrees. If we add the 50-50 mix and the cap together, we raise the temperature which the coolant boils to around 240 degrees. At 240 degrees, you can safely drive around, pass a truck, climb a hill, enjoy your car, and the coolant will come back down to where she's supposed to be. We have a nice, healthy system.